Hello Divination and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to design a blog post template with Divi's Theme Builder. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. But before we get started, I'd also like to say, if you don't want to go through the whole process of designing this whole template, it's also available for download in the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. So you can go ahead, download it, and just import it on your website, and you'll be up and running in a few seconds. So let's head over and start designing the blog post template. So the first thing we need to do is to create a brand new template. So I'm gonna come over here to Divi, and then hover over this area, click on Theme Builder. And the template we need to build is going to be a brand new one. So I'm going to click on this plus button and this template is going to be for all the posts. So I'm going to select all posts, create template. Next, we're going to uh, create a custom body area. So I'm going to click here on add custom body, build custom body, and we are going to build this from scratch. So the option I'm going to go with here is the uh, very first option. So I'm going to click here on build from scratch. We're going to add a single column. Now, before we add any uh, modules in here, let's uh, customize our section. So I'm going to come over here, click on this gear icon to enter my section settings, click on background, and we're going to start by adding a gradient. So I'm going to click here on the second tab, click this plus button, and I'm going to add my first color. Now, the color I'm going to add here can also be found in the post, which I'll link to in the show notes below. So if you want to, if you want to achieve the exact same design head over to the comments box and um, follow that link all right so now i'm going to add my second color paste it in here and then we need to change our gradient direction so i'm going to scroll down here a little bit make sure that uh, the gradient type is set to linear and then here on the uh, direction we're going to set this to 130 and the start position is going to be 25 percent so now that uh, we've added our gradient the next stage is to add a an image so i'm going to come over here add background image now, I have quite a few images here. So you just need to go with the image that uh, you prefer to use for the background. So I'm going to go with this very first image here, upload an image. So now you can see my image has been added in the background. But we're not done yet because there's a few things that we need to do here. So over here, I'm going to scroll all the way down. And here we need to use parallax. So I'm going to say yes to use parallax effect. And I'm also going to add some padding both to the top and the bottom. So I'm going to come over here to design spacing. And over here, I'm just going to add 7VW to the top. And if you want to add the same value, just click on this chain icon. And now my value has been added both to the top and the bottom. So pretty much that's all we need to do for now. So I'm going to save this. And then over here now, we need to start adding our modules. So I'm going to click here on this plus button. And the module that we're going to add is a text module. So I'm going to search for it and select it. Right. So now what we need to do is to use some dynamic content. So I'm going to come over here on this little plus button. So what I need to uh, add here is the posts or archive titles. I'm going to select it and now it's been added on. So now let's go ahead and um, stylize this. So I'm going to click on this gear icon here. So here where it says before, you can actually add this HTML code and you can also add it on after. So what happens here is this will be made into a heading one. So that's all you need to do before and after. So now if you look at this, you can see that the uh, title has gone slightly bigger. Now we need to go and uh, design this further. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to the design tab and uh, we're going to go in and um, set our text fonts. So I'm going to come over here. We're going to change this to Roboto. So I'm going to search for the font, select it. Next, I'm going to come over here on the size. In fact, the size is okay at uh, 16 and the line height needs to be set to about 1.8, which is uh, the default here. The text alignment needs to be centered. So I'm just going to sc scroll down here, make sure it's centered. And let's head over now to the heading font. So we're going to come over here, click on this brush tool. And now that takes me straight to my heading text. So again, this needs to be set to Roboto. And now since I've used it before, it's going to be here now. So I'm going to select it. And then we're also going to change the font weight. So here, I'm going to change it from regular to bold. And then the size needs to be 60 pixels. So I'm going to come over here and enter my size. But it's always a good idea that when you add your sizes, also go into the other devices and make sure that everything looks great on there. So I'm going to click on this little icon here, click on tablet, and I'm going to change this from 60 to 40. And on the phone, I'm also going to change this from uh, 40 to 32. So now, as you can see, it looks much better on the three screen sizes. Next, I'm going to come over here to my line height, set this to 1.2. So now there's a bit of space now between the lines. 
So if you take a look here as well, in fact, uh, this is all showing in one line, but uh, it may be that uh, you'll have a blog post which will have a longer sentence as a title, but that'll give it enough space here because of the light height that we've just added. When you take a look at this color here, you can see it's not really great on, on this uh, dark background. So what you can do is just change this to white. So now that is much better. All right, so what we need to do next is to add another section. So I'm gonna come over here, click this plus button. This is gonna be a regular section. And the column structure I need is this one right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this two thirds, one third. Now in this bigger part, I'm gonna add an image. Uh, image. Uh, so I'm going to search for my image module here, select it. Now we are going to add a featured image here. So in order for you to do that, what you want to do is to delete this. And then now you're left with this little icon and this allows us to add dynamic content. So I'm going to click on it and then I'm going to click on featured image. Now let's design this image module. So I'm going to come over here to the design tab. First of all, the alignment, uh, we're going to center this. Next, we're going to add a margin to this. So I'm going to come over here to spacing and the margin I'm going to add is going to be on the top. So I'm going to click here, add my margin and it's going to be minus nine VW. So now you can see that um, this featured image is going to be uh, in the space here where this main header area is. So um, we also need to make some adjustments to our tablet view. So I'm going to come over here, click on this little icon and I'm gonna go in and add zero VW for my tablet view. And that should be the same for the phone as well. So I'm gonna come back over here to my desktop. Now, next, I'm gonna add some rounded corners. So to do that, I'm gonna come over here to border and I'm just gonna add eight to all the sides. Now it's time to add a box shadow. So I'm gonna scroll down here, go to box shadow. And the option I'm gonna go with is this one right here. So I'm gonna select it. And now I can add my vertical position and my blur strength. So for my vertical position here, by default, it's set to 12. I'm going to set it to 16. Uh, and then for my blur strength, I'm going to set this to 96. And then for my box spread strength, I'm going to set this to minus 24. Okay, so that's looking much better now. So pretty much that's all we need to do. I think this is uh, looking much better now. But of course, uh, you're going to see it in action once you see a featured image added onto it when we open a new post. All right, so I'm going to save this. And then over here now on the right, I'm going to click on this plus button and add a blurb module. So I'm going to select it. Now, as we did before, we are also going to use dynamic content for this. So let's start here with the title. So over here on the title, I'm gonna click on this um, gear icon. And this time we need the post author. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it. And now let's go in and add a bit of uh, information here before the actual uh, content. So you can see here, uh, it's pulled in the dynamic content of John Doe. So before it, we wanna say written by. So now you can see it says written by John Doe. So it's really cool. Next, we're gonna come over here and um, you need to make sure that the name is linked. So I'm gonna click here on yes. And this is going to link to the author archive. So again, this is very important. So you just wanna make sure that when someone clicks the name, it takes them to all the posts by that person. So we're gonna save this now. Next, we're gonna come over here now to the body uh, to the body content. So here again, we're gonna use some dynamic content. So I'm gonna click here on uh, this little icon here. And this time, what we need to add is the author bio. So I'm gonna come over here, choose author bio. Now for the image, we can also use dynamic content. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna click here on image and icon, delete this, and then click on this little icon. And this time we, only, we need to add the post, the post author profile picture. So I'm gonna go ahead and select it. Now let's go in and design this blurb. So I'm gonna click here on the design tab. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to come over here to image and icon. And for the icon placements, I'm going to place this on the left. And then for the rounded corners, I'm gonna uh, add 50%. And now you can see it has, uh, it's now turned into a circle, which is great. Now, the next thing we need to do now is just to make sure that our font here is consistent. So let's head over here to our text. Right, so the next stage is to change our title font. So I'm gonna come over here, click on this brush tool, and now this is gonna take me straight to my title font. So I'm gonna click here on default, change this to Roboto. Next, I'm also gonna make it bold so it really stands out. So I'm gonna choose bold. And then for my line height, I'm gonna set this to 1.3. Now for the body, we're gonna change this to Lato. So I'm gonna click on this brush tool again, and then I'm gonna change this from default to Lato. And then for my line height, I'm gonna set this to 1.4. 
And for my image width, I'm going to set it to 50. So I'm going to come over here. And then here for my uh, image width, I'm going to set this to 50. All right, so pretty much we're done here with this design. I'm going to save this. And the next stage is to add another blurb module just under it. So I'm going to search for it, select it. And then on the title here, we need to uh, add an, another dynamic content. So I'm going to click here. And this time, what we need to do is to uh, pull in the post categories. So I'm just going to come over here and look for my post categories. So this time we are not going to use the image. So we're going to come over here to image and icon. And so I'm going to say use icon, set that to yes. Now let's choose the icon that we're going to go with. So I'm going to come over here, scroll down until I find um, the icon that I want to use. So the one I'm going to go with is this one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. Now we also have this text, uh, this uh, dummy text that we have here. We don't need that. So I'm going to come over here and get rid of it. So I'm just going to delete that. And then now the next stage is to just stylize this. So I'm going to come over here to design. So the first thing I'm going to do is to start with my image and icon. So here we need to change the image icon color. So I'm going to click on this eyedropper tool and just replace this color here with mine. And as I mentioned before, if you want to use the exact same colors that I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right. So here on um, icon placement, I'm going to change this to left. And then for the icon font size, I'm going to set this to yes, because this allows us to customize the size of the actual icon. So here we're going to set the, uh, the size to 20 pixels. So we want it nice and small. Now let's go to um, the title font. So I'm just going to click here. So it takes me directly to the title font. So we're going to change this to Roboto. And this time for the font weight, we're going to set this to medium. And we're also going to change the text color. So I'm just going to click here on... Um, on this eyedropper tool and paste my color in here. Now let's have to head over to the size. We're going to set this to 16 pixels and then the title line height. I'm going to set this to 20. Next, I want to add a bit of padding to the left. So I'm going to come over here to spacing, add my padding. So now you can see everything is all lined up correctly. So pretty much that's all we need to do here. Our design is complete. I'm going to save this. Next, I'm going to duplicate this because I need to add a comment count, but we're also going to do it as dynamic content. So now we just need to update the, uh, the content here. So I'm going to go into the settings by clicking on this little gear icon. And then for the, uh, for the dynamic content, I'm just gonna come over here to the title, delete this, and then click this one more time. And all the way down here, there is post comment count. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And now after, this is where we're just gonna add comments. And then we also need to update the icon. So I'm gonna come over here to image and icon, and then we're just gonna look for an icon, which is close to comments. So I'm gonna go with uh, this one right here. I'm gonna select it. So you can now see here that it's updated. So every time uh, people comment on your post, this will be updated uh, automatically or dynamically rather. Now we can also add a post publish date. So let's go ahead and add that. I'm going to save this, come back over here. I'm going to duplicate this, click on the gear icon and uh, delete what we have here. So what we need to do is to again, click on this dynamic content, choose post publish date and then save. Now we can go to our image and icon and choose an icon that works with that. So I think the one that works with that is a calendar. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just choose this one right here. So now that we've uh, added all the elements that we need here for our template, the next stage now is to add a post template. So I'm going to come over here, save this, and then we're going to add a new row. And this is going to have a single column just like that. And what we need to add here is the post content. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. So now I'm going to go into my settings here and make a few adjustments. So first of all, I'm going to come over here to design. And we also want to add some rounded corners to this image. So I'm going to click here on image and set this to eight pixels. Now, when it comes to these titles, you're going to also go in and customize your titles and make them look the way you want. So I'm going to just head over here to my heading text. And then I'm just going to remove the all caps and change this to Roboto. I'm going to do the same thing for post uh, for the uh, heading two and heading three. So over here, you can pretty much set up uh, everything that you need to set up in regards to your test text. So I'm going to come over here back to the text. So notice if I come over here to uh, the blog quote, I can actually customize this, change the color of that. I can also make it italic if I need to change the size. So as you can see, you can go in here and really customize this and make it look the way you want. And also let's say you want to um, change your links. All you have to do is to click here on this uh, little icon and this will change all your links to anything that has a hyperlink 
on your text. Next, I'm gonna come all the way down here to the bottom and I'm gonna also add another row, single column. And this time we're gonna add post navigation. So I'm just gonna search for post navigation, select it. And then what I'm gonna do here is on the previous link, I'm just gonna add this text here. So what it does is it just says previous and uh, it gives you the title. So we also need to do the same on the next. So I'm gonna come over here and add next. Now let's customize the font. So I'm gonna come over here to design and our links font is gonna be Roboto. So I'm gonna come over here, change this to Roboto. The weight is gonna be bold. And I'm also going to change the, uh, the color, paste it in here. Next, we're going to add a related post section. So what we're going to do here is we're gonna create a new section. So I'm gonna click on regular single column. And let's start by adding a text module. I'm gonna select it. Now in here, we're just gonna add some text just to give this context. So in here, we're just gonna add some text. And uh, this text is important because it just makes people know what is happening next here. So the text will just say, you may also like. Now let's stylize this text by coming over here to the design tab. And uh, we need to make sure that it's on heading two. And then we're gonna choose Roboto as our font. And the text size here is gonna be 48 and then save. So now the next stage is to add our blog module by clicking here on this plus button. I'm gonna search for blog, select it. Right, so let's customize this. So first of all, I'm gonna to come to my post, uh, post count and set this to three. And then over here on included categories, I'm gonna choose current category. Next for the except length, I'm gonna set this to 120. And then I also need to uh, come over here to elements. And on the elements here, we need to remove a few things. So first of all, show author, I'm gonna say no. Show categories, no. Show pagination, no. Now let's head over here to the design tab. So the first thing we wanna do here is to make sure the layout is set to grid because currently it's set to full width. So this will show this layout in a much better layout. So as you can see here, this looks much, much better. All right, so here you can see here that we have some posts here. This is because uh, I first created posts before I started creating this template. So in your case, you may not see any posts showing here, but it can always be added in at a later stage. All right, so what we need to do now is to just customize and just stylize this and make it look great. So I'm gonna start with the title font. So I'm gonna click here on default, set this to Roboto. And uh, we also need to add the size. So here it's set to 18. We need to bring it down to about 14. Then the line height is gonna be 1.3. And then moving on, the body font needs to be set to Lato. So I'm gonna come over here and change this to Lato. And the same applies with the meta font as well. So I'm gonna come over here, change this from default to Lato. And for the meta text color, I'm just gonna paste my color in here. Now, as I mentioned before, if you wanna use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. Now, let's head over to the grid layout. So in the grid layout, I need to add some rounded corners. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down here. In fact, uh, to make things easier for me, I can just search for it here. So here's the grid layout. So on the rounded corners here, we're gonna set this to 20. Next over here on the border width, we're gonna set this to zero. Now let's head over to the box shadows. So I'm just gonna remove this and then scroll all the way down here to my border. Now for my border shadow, the option I'm gonna go with is very first one here, so I'm gonna select this. So now you can see this has separated this from the background. Now all we need to do is to add my vertical position and uh, I'm gonna change this to 16. The blur strength, I'm gonna set this to 96 and the spread strength is going to be minus 24. Right, so pretty much we're done here. This is looking really nice. I'm gonna save this. Next, we also need to add the comments section. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button to add a new row, single column. And here is my comments module. So I'm gonna select it. So first things first, I'm gonna come over here to my background and add a background color by clicking on this plus button and just adding my color like that. Now we can go into the fields colors by coming over here to the design. So here we're going to start with adding the fields background color, setting it to white. The focus color needs to be white as well. And then over here on the fields text color, I'm gonna set this really dark gray. Now moving on, we also need to add the fields margin. So I'm gonna come over here and the margin I need to add is going to be on the bottom. So I'm just gonna add my margin here. And then for the padding, I'm gonna set this to 18 to the top and 18 to the bottom. Fields font needs to be Lato just to have some consistency here with our design. And then I'm also gonna add my size, which is gonna be about 16 pixels. And the line height is gonna be 1.4. 
Now let's head over to uh, the image rounded corners. So I'm going to choose image. And for the image rounded corners, I'm going to set this to 60. Now let's go to the title font. So I'm going to come over here to title text. And then I'm just going to make sure that uh, this is also set, set to Roboto. And the size is 26. Now over here on the line height, we're going to set this to 1.3. Now, moving on, the meta text, we also need to customize this by changing the default font here to Leto. And then I'm going to come over here to my comment text, and I'm going to change the comment text color to this really dark gray. And we also need to add some padding to this. So I'm going to come over here to spacing, and uh, we're just going to add a 5% all around. Because the reason why is, as you can see here, my text here and all the content that's going to come in this comments box is going to be way close to the edges. So let's, this is the way to fix it. So I'm going to add my 5% here, add it all around like that. So this is going to have a lot of breathing space. Finally, let's work on the button. So I'm just going to come over here and click on button, use custom styles for button. So the first thing we need to do is to head over to the size. I'm going to set this to 14 pixels. For our button border width, I'm going to set this to zero. Border radius, I'm going to set this to 4. Now, over here on the letter spacing, I'm going to set this to 5 pixels. And the font needs to be Roboto. So I'm going to change this from default, choose Roboto, set it to bold, uppercase. And then we're also going to add some padding to the top and the bottom. So pretty much that's all we need to do here. I'm going to save. We're going to head over back to the top here because we need to add a header divider. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon. And I'm going to come over here to design dividers. So this divider needs to be on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that. And then I'm going to come over here to the style. So the style that we're going to go with is, is this one. So I'm going to select it. Next, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to flip it horizontal on the divider height. I'm going to set this to 10 VW. And on the divider color, I'm going to set this to white. So pretty much we've added all the content that we need and this is our complete design. So we're going to save here. And we also need to save this page. And then on the top right here, we're just going to click here to exit. And don't forget to make sure that you save here on the Diffy Builder. Now let's head over to our post and just take a look at any post that we have here. All right, so now I'm going to come over here to one of my blog posts, click on view. And we're going to take a look and see if the template has been applied. And surely it has. And this looks really nice. So as you can see here, this design that we've added here on the header area is also working well. And if I scroll down here, you can see my images here of the rounded corners, which I added. And on the all the way right here at the bottom, we also have the uh, related posts, which is really cool. And we also have the comments section. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.